Allotments in London are scarcer than gold dust, but for those lucky enough to have one, well, they're a great way of combining staying fit and active with the satisfaction of growing cheap and healthy food. But there's one allotment in Barnet that offers something unique and incredibly valuable to the people who work the land there, a way for them to escape the horrors of their pasts as victims of torture. I should warn you that some viewers may find the accounts in this film disturbing. This ramshackle place is full of tranquility and beauty. But there are gardeners here getting a lot more out of this soil than just the flowers and vegetables that they grow. I came here because of the conflict between the Tusi and Hutu in my country, Burundi. I'm growing some potatoes, carrots. I'm from Sierra Leone. We're growing lettuce, tomatoes and potatoes. And we grow spring onions there. We grow all sorts of vegetables here. I was carpenter and teacher in Cameroon. When I see maize grow like this, I feel like uh, just remind me of my, my country. This allotment is a council-owned site, and the charity Freedom From Torture rent six plots here. They're used to aid the well-being of people from all over the world, and their stories are hardly those of typical gardeners. I leave uh, Africa because uh, uh, the war started and because I was in a mo uh, political movement, all my family was killed and I saved my, my life to come here. After killing my father, a gang of boys and soldiers kept coming to our house, beating us. My husband was burnt alive while in presence of my children, my mom and myself. I had to run to the bush for safety. Those people came and they started raping me, beating me. They left me really half dead. I met a man, he told me he's going to free me from the country. I'm taking you to my friends in this country. There were four men they would force me to have sex, they would rape me. They locked me in the house for three and a half years. One of the commanders of the Revolutionary United Front was threatening to wipe my entire family. And he demonstrated that by burning my dad's house, by killing members of my family while I was there. When he came there, he arrived at the house. They... It's... When he came at the house, sorry about that, he stripped everyone naked. He asked everyone to come out, strip everyone naked. He raped all the women. He raped all the women there, including my grandma. I arrived in the UK in 2007. I received a message. The remaining members of my family had been killed. That's my dad and my little sister. Two psychotherapists and a horticulturalist work with these gardeners using nature to lift them from the depths of their despair. I bring them into the allotment straight away. That calms their mind, calms their whole being. I can't calm them down just by what I say. It's also what they do and what the land does through you know, the working on the land. The biggest problem is that they are so involved in their emotions. They are full of fears, anxieties, and terror, and, and it over overwhelms them. There's, there's nothing left of them, just, just that, that Im intense emotions. They come here, it's, it's like suddenly we need to care about plants, about watering, about something else. My approach is basically to do anything a client wants to try. You can grow grapes, you can grow potatoes, and there's a reliability in in, in the natural world, which they don't, because they've been betrayed, really, by human beings. So they, they need to find something which doesn't betray them and will never, never betray them. The victims of torture are referred to the charity by doctors and lawyers and are often so traumatised that sending them straight onto the allotment would be too much for them. So they first receive therapy 
in a specially designed garden in Finsbury Park. Mary Raffelli works with the most vulnerable. There's one plant here that stands right out. The young man who planted it came from a Middle Eastern country where he was imprisoned and very, very badly tortured. What the regime did was they arrested his father, his mother, his wife, his four-year-old child, and the baby he'd never seen, and they were all killed. The first day he came, we planted three plants in a pot, and I said, who are they? And he told me the names of his wife and two children. We needed to plant a shrub that would last, because those were just plants that would last a season. And he said, it must be evergreen. And he said, it must have tiny flowers, because his little face was so small. Torture destroys. Torture fractures and fragments. And so what people have to do is somehow gather themselves together again. And that's a lot of what we're doing here. I've been attending some psychotherapy sessions repeatedly. Finally, I started developing my confidence because before, I don't even, I, I don't even talk the way I'm talking now. I can't talk. It's like when they force you to engage yourself on something, doing something continuously because you concentrate on one particular thing. For example, if you're doing weeding, you make sure you concentrate on uprooting the weeding downwards and you, just, you don't just pick the leaf. So it's like your mind is connected with what you're doing. It has given me life. I was with a woman who was so severely tortured. Two years she hadn't spoken a single word. She was sitting there and watering the plants. No movement, no feeling. And I encouraged her to splash my feet a little. And I looked at her. And I've never seen it so vividly. Suddenly I saw as if somebody turned on a light switch in her eyes. Suddenly I could see a spark coming through. And she took the hose and soaked me from head to toe and screamed, laughed, and she couldn't stop herself. And we were all, we were stunned and we were all crying and laughing because it was just as if something broke through. I compare a uh, plant to grow in with uh, a, my growing, human growing, human being growing. So it's very, very uh, wonderful. Most of the time when I'm in my room, I get nightmares. I feel traumatized. I feel lonely. But when I'm with people in a community, I feel cheerful. You know when you are you have lost all your family, you don't have a family in the world. You get friends and you get such people out caring. You feel really you are back with your family. Now these are my family.